Hi booktube! My name is Sarah and welcome to The Bookish Knitter. Today I am coming to you with the start of another weekly reading vlog. This is for week number 28. It is July the 9th through the 15th. Happy Sunday everybody. It is the 9th today. It is early afternoon and starting off the vlog, um, had a bit of a, not a busy morning, actually had a very relaxing morning. I got some books cataloged, which is what I've been working on. That's one of my big projects. And then we all went out for lunch because it's my aunt's birthday tomorrow. So if you're watching this, Aunt Sandy, happy birthday on Monday. Birthday will have already passed by the time this video goes up. And now I'm home. I filled, filmed, excuse me, two quick little videos that are going up later this week. You guys will have already seen those. And now I'm just going to be, I'm going to film this little clip. And then I'm going to go and relax for the rest of the day because I ate way too much at lunch and now I feel full. <laughs> <laughs> one of those where you don't need a big dinner now you just need a little something you know what I mean but yeah so I just wanted to kind of just jump on here and start off the vlog and share with you some crafty stuff as well as what I'm currently reading because then I can kind of show you guys my progress at the end of the week so the one thing that I'm working on knitting wise that I really want to concentrate on because it's my goal to finish this sock by the end of the month because these are Christmas socks and it's Christmas in July and I just think it'd be really fun to get this sock done so this is my Christmas sock from 2021. I've got one sock finished. I need to finish the second one. I'm working on the leg. So it goes this way, actually. So I put the little stitch marker um, up here. Um, let me move the little duck out of the way. But this little marker up here. So at the end of the week, when I, you know, do my wrap up little clip for the vlog, I will show you guys how far I have gotten on this. The yarn is from um, Ravenswood Fiber Company, and it's called Christmas Sock Candy or Sock Candy or something like that. I don't think it's available, um, but you might want to try to check at the holidays, but her yarn is delightful. She's a Canadian independent uh, yarn dyer, so I highly recommend her. I will leave link to her shop in the description box below because she has some amazing colorways. Now, in terms of what I've been cross-stitching, um, I've been working on this for a while, and I've decided to kind of like work on it for like the whole month and then switch to another project for next month. So for this month I am working on, um, it's called um, Pretty Little Hawaii and it is by a designer called Satsuma Street and I will leave link to the pattern below on Etsy in case you're curious. So I am really pleased with this. I am stitching this a little bit differently than I typically stitch things where I'm doing, so if you look at a cross stitch pattern, it's, it's essentially like a graph paper with the symbols where you stitch whatever individual color. So the graph is laid out in 10 by 10 squares. Like the 10 by 10 squares have a bit of a darker line between them. And what I do is I'm essentially stitching that entire 10 by 10 square and then going on to the next one. So that's why it kind of looks very blocky right now, right? Because I've stitched, you know, like I started in the center and then I went up and so, you know, I'm slowly working my way and I'm going to be kind of doing this in a spiral, building out these 10 by 10 inch squares or 10 by 10 graph squares, essentially. If you're not a cross stitcher, that probably doesn't make sense. But if you are a cross stitcher, I think you know what I'm talking about. So like I said, this is called Pretty Little Hawaii. When I look at it up close, I can't see it as well as I can back here, which is funny, but the further away you can kind of see the detail in it. So as you can see, probably there's some fl uh, waterfalls into the water. This is a bridge that's been started. This is like a little house. There's a palm tree. There's another palm tree. There's a hut. So eventually there's going to be whales and um, a volcano. Um, it's very cool. So she does these great patterns and she does them for a lot of major cities. But this one is just Hawaii. Um, I have the one for Toronto that I'm not 100% happy with. I've got to restart it. And I also have the one for London because I love the London one because it's got the old red London buses. Um, but Toronto pretty much has most of the Toronto skyline or attractions kind of all pushed together, but in a really artistic way. Anyway, if you're a cross stitcher, check out our patterns. They are beautiful. So this is where I am now. So again, I will show you guys at the end of the week and we will see where I got to. I'm hoping to get this done, this part done, and then start working back up this way. So yeah, I really like stitching it this way. Um, it's kind of easy because you're like, okay, I just got to do this 10 by 10 grid. And then I can move on to the next 10 by 10 grid. So in some of the grids, you might only get one or two stitches of a single color. It all depends, right? But I prefer doing it that way. I find it easier to do the counting and, and whatever. So anyway, so there's that. So that was the crafty stuff. Now on to the stuff you're actually probably here for, which is books. What am I currently reading? If I can get all three of these books done this week, I will consider it a win. So the first book that I am reading is Joe's Girl by Margaret St. George. This is a old Harlequin American romance, number 710. 
from 1998. I am reading this for the Retro Romance Readathon, as well as this is the next book for my Harlequin project that I am reading, and I'm enjoying it. This is very much a 1990s book, and I mentioned that in my last video, um, but I am really enjoying it so far. So I'm about 80 pages in, and uh, I'm actually reading it physically, which is kind of cool, you know? Like, all three of the books I'm currently reading, I'm reading physically, which is kind of nice. It's like, I feel like it's retro reading. <laughs> <laughs> not reading on my Kindle, not reading as an audiobook. It's just old fashioned picking up a book and reading it. So I am enjoying this one. The other one that I'm currently reading is Meet Me at the Lake. And sorry if it's flickering. That's my, um, that's not good because that is my uh, ring light. I might have to look at getting a new ring light. It is Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. Um, I picked this one up on a whim uh, from Chapters Indigo from the bookstore. Because the author is local Torontonian, and it takes place in Muskoka, which is the really nice cottage country just north of us, and also in Toronto, in, like, the flashback scenes. I am that far into it. I've been reading it for about two days now. Don't know what I think about it. I'm not sure what I think of the main character, like, our female lead. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to keep going. I don't want to give up on it because, like, I've been watching these videos over the last few days. I think Steve Donahue and Michael K. Vaughn both did the how to rate your books tag or something. I'm a few weeks behind on videos on YouTube. And they both talk about the fact that they don't DNF because what if the book gets better? And unless this book is offending me, I think I'm going to try and push through it as much, as much as I can, which is kind of why I'm reading more than one book. So like if this one just kind of, I just put it down and I pick up something else. So we shall see. But I mean, I know life is too short to read bad books and I have not heard some of the best things about this one, but I've never read this author before. So I'm really kind of, and because she's Canadian, I kind of want to really give it a shot. And the cover is just so pretty, so pretty. So stay tuned. We shall see how I do with that one this week. And last but not least, just yesterday, I started Small Town Big Magic by Hazel Beck. So far, I am really enjoying this one. I am about that far into it. And yeah, this is absolutely delightful. This is a fantasy romance about a group of witches in a small town in the Midwest. And there is a romance in here. Hazel Beck is the pen name for, um, is it Caitlin Cruz and Nicole Helm or Megan Crane? I think Megan Crane and Caitlin Cruz are the same person. Yeah, it is Megan Crane is her her actual name, like her real name, and Nicole Helm, but I believe Caitlin Cruz is like her other pen name. So the two of them are writing this together under the name Hazel Beck, and yeah, so far really enjoying it. We'll update you guys on this one as well. Anyway guys, that is it. I just wanted to say hello, open up the vlog. Um, tomorrow's Monday. I am in work or at work all week next week. Um, I actually am going to a different location tomorrow because we are going to a celebratory lunch. Um, me and two other girls uh, in the office are being taken out for lunch because uh, we, all three of us within the last month or month and a half, passed the administrator's course. So a couple of um, like the trustees, my manager and stuff like that, they are taking us out for lunch tomorrow, which is going to be super fun. So I will share that with you guys when I get home tomorrow, how it went and what kind of yummy food that we ate. So yeah, I am really looking forward to that. So like I said, I'm going to a different office tomorrow. So that'll be a lot of fun. And so I'm going to work out of that different office because it's closer to the restaurant. And it makes more sense than me going to our my office to come back down. To, it saves on travel time, essentially. And then I'm just in the office all next week. So yeah. So anyway, guys, that is it. Um, I will let you go. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Hi, friends. It is later on Sunday night. It's actually just after 8 o'clock. And I have had a pretty good afternoon since the last time I talked to you. Um, I did a lot of book organizing, which was great. Um, and I did start to kind of clear some shelves off out there in my other room, in the book room. I actually put some piles together of books that I'm going to be getting rid of. There's a lot of them, guys, as I was clearing off. Not my category romance shelves, but like my other shelves. I'm really trying to purge my collection down to stuff that I know, like physical books that I want to read. If there's uh, like, you know, uh, stuff that I want to keep on my shelf, stuff that I want to collect, essentially. There's a lot of books that I want to read, and I think that I'm going forward, I'm probably going to just be working on getting them, um, on getting them, uh, digitally, if at all possible. So yeah, but I just thought I'd come to you guys with a bit of an update because I decided to DNF a book today, actually. And the book that I decided to DNF was Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune, unfortunately. I tried to get into this one, guys, it took me three days to get through 30 pages. 
I just, at the very beginning, I was really liking it. Like this girl, this woman, excuse me, um, comes back from the city from Toronto to take over the resort that her mother ran when her mother died uh, very unexpectedly in a car accident. And it flashes back to 14 years ago where she met this guy named Will at a coffee shop in Toronto. She had just finished university and they had planned to meet a year later at this resort or something like that and they never showed. And now he's shown up at the resort and that's literally how far I got. Like I said at the beginning, I liked it, but the more I got to know Fern, the main character, I didn't like her. I'm sorry, I don't know what it was, but I just didn't care. And I mean, yeah, I gave it, uh, I'm DNFing it at 30 pages, right? Like a lot of people be saying, well, at least give it, you know, a couple more chapters or whatever. But guys, three days in 30 pages, I just did not want to pick this one up. So, and I'm disappointed because again, it takes place in my hometown. It takes place in Muskoka. You know, I am very familiar with the locations that are discussed in this book. But that still doesn't make up for the fact that I didn't care about the characters, right? So anyway, yeah, that's, it was just very, very weird. Like she runs into this guy and like in the fifth chapter or whatever, and she runs away from him. Like, what are you, 12? And she ends up falling down on this pathway and he's like trying to help her. And she's like, oh, get a, you know, like, I understand that you're angry at somebody because they broke a promise to you 14 years ago and you haven't seen them since, but really you're gonna run away like a child it just seemed very weird to me so anyway dnf it's actually gonna go in the pile to the thrift store maybe somebody else will pick it up and hopefully they will enjoy it um i also decided that i'm not in the mood to read the swiss nurse by mario escobar that was going to be my next book on my list after meet me at the lake but um i looked at it and i just thought to myself i'm not in the mood to read it i'm just not feeling a historical World War I Spanish War book right now. I know it is booktube at wartime and I do have, you know, like this this week I've got the Diary of a War Bride on my list. So I'm very excited about that one. And I think the last book, I can't remember what the last book that I have on my list is. The one that will be for next week is something that I can't, oh, it's the Canadian one. And even that one, I'm kind of like, I don't know. I might look to see what other books take place during the war might be uh, available. Because I think, again, I just don't think I'm in the mood for heavy right now. And I feel like The Swiss Nurse and uh, the one by Genevieve Graham, which is the other one, um, that takes place during the um, Indian-French War, the French-Indian War, I think is what it, it involved Canada. I just think that those are, are heavier books and they're not what I'm in the mood for. And yeah, I don't know. I think I'm just in the mood for just light, you know, fun. I mean, Diary of a War Bride does take place during the war, but it's a lot lighter, if that makes sense. Like, it's not so heavy in terms of what it talks about. So, yeah. Anyway, that's where I am right now with my reading. I got a good bit read today of uh, Joe's Girl by Margaret St. George. So I'm going to continue on with that. It's like I said, it's only eight o'clock. I've got a few more hours before I have to go to bed. And I got another chapter read of uh, Small Town Big Mac, Big Magic, which I am really enjoying. So yay on this one. I might just go and just like peruse my shelves and see what I've got. Like I don't need to start another book right now. And I've got a lot of books on my list for this week. But I'm thinking for next week for Booktube at War. I do. Okay, so if I get Diary of a War Bride read, that gives me one book read for Booktube at War. And I think that that's pretty good. Booktube at War Story, for those of you who don't know, is a event created by Michael K. Vaughn. And it's just to read books set during the war. Any war. Doesn't matter. Um, but there was one that Elizabeth over at Lizzie Fay Loves Books talked about this weekend on a live show that I did. The War Librarian, I think it's called. I'm going to look that one up because it sounded really good. It was one of those dual timeline ones. And that I think I could go for because it's not as heavy maybe. So anyway, I'm rambling, you guys. I'm going to sit and relax and watch some booktube and do some reading. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow.
Hi friends, happy Wednesday. Today is the uh, 12th of July and like I said, it's Wednesday. I don't think I've talked to you guys since Sunday. I am very, very sorry. It's been kind of a rough, not rough in a bad way, but just not a great start. No, I can't say that. It's been a busy start to the week. Let's go there. So on Monday, I had uh, I went downtown to the downtown office that we have and went out for lunch uh, to celebrate my um, uh, successful completion of the administrator's course for work. Me and two other ladies who also, uh, we were all successful in completing the course. So some of the trustees took us out for lunch, which was, and my manager, which was delightful. We went to this amazing Greek restaurant. It was so good. Um, so that threw me off because I wasn't in the office that I'm normally in. It was also different hours. I normally work 11 till seven on Mondays and in order to accommodate the lunch with everybody else, I did a nine to five, which was fine. And then on Tuesday, um, I was 11 to seven and I was in the office, my usual shift. And then today was my early day. It was 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. So yeah, it's just been because I worked out of a different office on Monday, my routine was thrown off and I, <laughs> I, um, I was just like out of source. Like today, I kept thinking today was Tuesday. Um, but clearly it was Wednesday. So tomorrow, um, because I switched with another girl tomorrow is actually, I have to work 11 till seven tomorrow too, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. And then on Friday, I'm nine to five and I get to work from home. So that makes me happy. So I'm all bundled up in a sweater because I am cold. Um, so Garrett and I, I came home, I got home just after five my aunt came over, or my brother was here with his kids, and they were in the pool. Then my aunt came over with her grandchildren and my um, my cousin and his wife. And um, so I was sitting around the backyard talking to them. And then Garrett had made us dinner. Sorry, I'm just putting my laptop on so I can, um, if you see the screen go bright, so I can um, edit the video that's supposed to go up tomorrow because that's how far behind I am. I just feel like I'm behind the eight ball this week. And... Um, he made dinner, so we ate dinner, and then we went for a walk. So I'll put the clips just after this so you guys can see. I didn't get very much, like maybe 30 seconds worth of clips um, for this like uh, conservation area that we took a walk through because my phone was like on less than 10% battery, so I did not want to kill my phone. So anyway, that's what's been going on. Um, I am hoping to check in tomorrow. I have not been doing it. To, I've gotten some reading done, but not as much as I'd like. A lot more over the last few days. So I am still working my way through. I've got that much, this much left of Joe's Girl by Margaret St. George. I actually did think last night about DNFing this, but I was already more than halfway through it. And I'm just like, I don't want to do that. So I don't dislike the book. There are just some things that are kind of grating on my nerves. And one of the instances is that Joe, our main character, keeps calling her honey. He calls everybody honey, and it's just a little much. He's also a contractor, so all of his workers, he calls them pooches. And like a dog, like a pooch, right? And I'm just like, mm, I don't know about that. And it's very 90s in the terms of the way the women are talked to in some instances. Like a little degrading in a way, like talking down to. So, I mean, I'm taking it for what it is. Times have changed since this was written. So I need to remember that. I, and, and, you know, I mean, it's a cute story. She's a former supermodel who's come back to this small town. He's had a crush on her since the eighth grade. And, you know, it really is a very cute little story. It's just, it's very 1990s. And I think you definitely need to take it with a grain of salt. So my goal is to get this done tomorrow. Um, I also, I've been listen, reading this and then I moved it over to audio because I found it on Scribd on audio and I was super excited about that. So I am listening to, on my way to and from work, Small Town Big Magic by Hazel Beck. So I am a little more than halfway through this book and I'm hoping to get this one done probably by Friday, um, is my goal. So I do like this one. I love the magical element to this one. Um, but the main character, I'm not sure I like her. She's the kind of character where she knows best. You know, she she's perfect. She knows exactly what she's doing. You can't tell her what to do. And that kind of like, I appreciate that in, in, in a female, like female empowerment, um, you know, things like that. But it's getting to be a little bit much because it's not just, you know, I can do what you can do. Yeah, it's it's not just that. It's more of if you don't listen to what we're telling you, 
you're going to get killed. You know what I mean? It, it's just being a little too reckless. So the plot of this story, I'll give it to you guys very, very briefly, is that um, this takes place in a small town and there are witches. And our main character, whose name is Emerson, she is a... I don't want to give too much away to, to reveal too much of the story. There's witches in this town. She is a witch and she just found out about her powers without giving too, too much away. And there are some very evil forces that are now invading the town and they need to, her and her little coven, her cousin and her best friend and, um, you know, like her friends, they need to kind of stop this bad thing from happening. So that's pretty much it. But like I said, she just kind of found out and got her powers and she's literally being like, well, I know more than you do. Like, no, you don't. They're not telling this to be mean. They're not saying, you know, be careful to be mean. They're saying be careful because you could get killed. It's kind of an idea, right? So not absolutely sure how much I love it, but I do love the other characters in this story. So that's really good. And I know it's the first in the series. So I am looking forward to the next, um, the next book to see what character comes in for that. And then last but not least, I picked this one up last night. Secrets Can Kill by Carolyn Keene. This is the first book in the Nancy Drew series. That's how far I am. If you remember from an earlier clip, I was reading role playing. Well, I ended up deciding to use a credit. Um, no, I didn't use a credit because um, through Audible, because I owned the ebook, the Kindle edition, I was able to get the audio edition of role playing on audio for a very decent price. It was like $1.99 or something like that. So I have the audio of it. So when I'm done small town big magic, I'm going to move to that one on audio mainly because the male voice is narrated by Chris Brinkley and he does the voices for the Winston Brothers series. And I love his narration so much. So anyway, total side note. So I'm saving that audio for when I'm done small town big magic, but I picked this one up instead. I, again, this is these three books. I should be able to get done before the end of this vlog. So that'll give me another three book wait, reading week, which is pretty good. Um, now that I've decided to pick up an audiobook, like always kind of have an audiobook on the go, I might get through stuff a bit faster because um, I do have like five hours a week in my car. No, more than that. Because I'm an hour each way. So 10 hours a week that I'm now gaining back in, in time to listen to, to do some reading. You know what I mean? While I'm behind the wheel. So that's the great thing about audio. And I you know, love audio for that reason. So yes, yeah, so that's what I'm currently reading. Anyway, um, this is going to be a bit of a shorter vlog, I think, because I missed all those days, but, um, I do want to show you what I got in the mail. So I am participating again. I signed up to do this, um, the booktube besties retreat, and it's happening next weekend. So the weekend of the 21st, I think the 21st is Friday. So the 21st to the 22nd. And it is the summer road trip retreat. And because I signed up, I got a bookmark. So this was sent to me from, um, is it Jen at the Curly Reader? Oh my gosh, I feel so bad. Um, Amanda, it's Amanda over at the Curly Reader. She created this mm -hmm. super, super adorable. So I got that bookmark. It's laminated. So that came in the mail today. And then also Lindsay over at Lindsay's Little Library had created um, some book sleeves, especially for those of us who are going to the retreat. So it was like a limited time you could, you could purchase. And I had to get one because I do not have any of her book sleeves and I, they are really, really great quality. So again, this is from Lindsay's Little Library. I will leave a link to her Etsy shop. This one in particular will not be available, but she has a lot of other great stuff to check out if you're a book sleeve kind of person. So that's it. It's a nice big size. So it could essentially fit something like small town, big magic, right? So that would fit in there and you guys can see it's a nice big size to protect your book. And I really, really like the design on it. So this was kind of, like I said, limited edition for us in the retreat. I can never say no to limited edition. And I've done the retreat a couple, I've actually done all three of them. The first one I paid for to join this one. I also paid money to join. The last one though, I was asked to participate as a panelist, like as somebody to do it, uh, to talk about romance novels. So I got to kind of join in for free, which was a lot of fun, but yeah, it's, it's super fun. Um, you kind of, um, you, you know, there's groups, there's reading time, there's discussions, there's, you know, it's, it is a lot of fun. And I find every time I do it, I tend to get a lot of reading done. So that's a big bonus. But anyway, guys, I am rambling on. I have a video to edit and I need to get to bed because I'm exhausted. 
Garrett and I decided to start doing these walks at night because it's going to help both of us sleep, I think, because we haven't been sleeping well. So that's kind of the hope. Um, tomorrow we're going to go for a walk around the neighborhood. So I will try to bring my camera for that. And then on Friday, we talked about going down to the lake, which should be a lot of fun to go for a walk. So again, I will bring my, um, my phone with me so I can get some video. So anyway, guys, that is it. I will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye everybody. So it is Thursday evening after work and I need to edit a video that's going to go up tomorrow. And unfortunately, I have a cat between me and the laptop. <laughs> he's half laying on my legs. <laughs> and he's just being a big love. He's being bashful. This is our bean. You know what? We let him sit where he wants. The video can get edited later. Hi friends, happy Friday. Today is the 14th of July and I am coming to you with another little update. So, since yesterday I finished two books, which is great. Unfortunately, both of them were kind of duds, um, one way more than another. So, um, what I've noticed is, is that I keep a list, of course, of the books that I read every, read every month, read, read every month, and I keep track of what the, um, um, star ratings that I give stuff. And I've noticed that there's a steady decline this month, like from like the first book that I finished this month, I gave like four and a half to five stars. And then it was like a four and a half star read. And then it was a four star read. And then now da 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 da. I'm hoping we're going to get back on the upswing because yeah, it's, it has not been the best the last couple days or the last little while for reading. So the first book that I finished, I finished this yesterday was Joe's Girl by Margaret St. George. So this is a Harlequin American romance novel. This is one that I read for the Retro Romance Readathon. This took me way too long to finish, like eight days. I just didn't have the drive to pick it up. Essentially, it's a very 90s, like I keep saying it's very 90s in feel. So it's about a woman named Molly who is a very, very famous supermodel. She is the face of a cosmetic company called Apple Cosmetics, sounding like a cover girl, like, like cover girl cosmetics cover girl. And same kind of an idea. And then she's in a skiing accident and she like breaks her cheek and she has all these things that happen. But she's left with, after all this plastic surgery, like a scar above her lip and one on her eyebrow. But, you know, Apple Cosmetics has like dropped her because like she's not pretty anymore. She's not perfect anymore. Blah, blah, blah. So she moves back to this small town and she um, takes over her grandparents' house and she decides to gut it and restore it. And Joe, who's our male lead, he is the contractor that she hires. So the whole story is the two of them kind of working together and, and her um, gaining her confidence back. I really liked Molly as a character. Um, I liked how take charge she was. I liked that if for a woman in the 90s, like for the, for those of you who have read these kind of romances that are set in that time period, she she kind of really stood up for herself. You don't see that a lot. And I really, really liked that. Um, what kind of drove me crazy was Joe. He was very much that aw shucks kind of guy. Like when I picture, I, I you know, like baseball cap or cowboy hat, if you will, pulled lower over his eyes. He's kind of got like the piece of straw hanging out of his, no uh, out of, I almost said his nose, out of his mouth, you know, thumbs tucked in the front pocket of his jeans and just kind of stand there and go, aw, little lady, you know, like that kind of thing, right? That was the kind of guy that Joe was. He called everybody honey, even his like the guys who worked for him or that or pooches. He called them his pooches, which... That drove me a little bit crazy. Um, and some of the, and a lot of the characters were just characterizations of people I found. Like they were just like, you know, you had like this old, older rich guy who was trying to take advantage of Molly and you have this and you have that in this small town. And it just, I liked it, but I didn't love it. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, I thought that this was a fine book. I gave it three stars, but I don't know if I'd absolutely recommend it. Um, you know, unless this is kind of your jam. It was a cute story and I did enjoy it, but I didn't love it. Speaking of things that I did not love. Small Town Big Magic by Hazel Beck. Yeah, guys, I did not like this. I'm sorry. I gave this book two stars. I skim read the last four chapters of this book because I just stopped caring. Um, I did listen to this majority of it on audio um, and I'm kind of glad that I did. Like, at so many points, I was debated on putting it down, but I'm like, I'm so close. And I kept thinking, it's going to redeem itself. It's going to redeem. Our main character is going to redeem herself. And she did not. So my biggest, okay, so the plot of this story, this is labeled as a romantic comedy fantasy because it involves witches. Fine. 
I'm all for it. I loved the X Hex a couple years ago by, um, what's her name? I can't remember the author's name. And there's been a number of them that I've read lately that I've really, really enjoyed. And I mean, this is written by Hazel Beck. For those of you who don't know who that is, it is the pen name for Caitlin Cruz. No, no. Megan Crane and Nicole Helm. Megan Crane's pen name, other pen name is also Caitlin Cruz. And they are two of my favorite authors for Harlequin. And I was just so on board for this. And I'm sorry, but this book drove me crazy. Our main character, Emma Emerson, I really actually did not like her. It got to points in the book where she would say something and I would actually feel myself like tense up because I was annoyed at whatever it was she was going to say, even though she hadn't said it yet. So Emerson um, just found out, uh, spoiler alerts for this, just finds out at the beginning of this book that she's a witch. There's these evil forces in town that are going to take over. Turns out that she was mind wiped when she was younger. Like she did learn magic and then supposedly she wasn't any good at magic. So they wiped her mind of all the magical ability or her knowledge of that magical ability. But now it's come back to her and blah, blah, blah. So she was a feminist, which is fine. So am I. But she was a every word out of my mouth is against the patriarchy feminist. And it just got to be a little bit much like, you know what? If he wants to hold the door open for you, he's just being polite. I'm sure he'd do that for a man or for, you know, a dog or whatever. He's not holding open the door because he doesn't think you can't. He's doing it to be polite. You know, like that's the point it got to. And I just couldn't stand her. This also, not a romantic comedy. Nowhere in this book did I laugh at all. And as for romance, the romance kind of like was complete second nature to the story. It was mostly about Emerson and her fellow witches trying to fight this, which, you know what, if the book had been labeled as that, I would have really liked it. But I found it really, really dragged throughout the middle of this book. I will not be reading the second book. I'm sorry. I, I know it's about Emerson's sister. I looked at it. I was so excited for this you guys I was so excited for this this was one of my most anticipated reads last year and I was just so disappointed like and I know that it, this one is very polarizing because I was looking at the reviews on Goodreads some people you either loved this book or you hated this book and unfortunately I was in the hated it camp to the point where when I'm done filming this I'm walking into my book room and this is being put into one of the bags that is being donated as pretty as this book is, it's not staying on my shelves because I will never read this again. I'm sorry. I will continue to read Megan Crane um, and Nicole Helm all day long, but I just don't see myself picking up the second book. I mean, maybe I might be convinced because Emerson was my biggest issue with this story. My biggest issue with this story. So maybe another lead character might change. We'll see. I will not be buying that book. If I decide to read it, I'll borrow it from my library when it comes out and go from there. But again, I'm not rushing to do that. Let's put it that way. So what am I currently reading, my friends? Excuse me. Cheers from my giant water bottle. I'm really trying to drink more water. <laughs> Can you tell? Um, so I'm still reading the Nancy Drew book. Reach over here and grab it. I'm still reading Nancy Drew, uh, Secrets Can Kill by Carolyn Keene, the first book in the Nancy Drew Files series. I am not quite halfway through this one. I kind of concentrated on trying to finish Small Town Big Magic today, so that's just so I could get this one off my plate, because I just, like, I skim-read the last four chapters of that book just because I stopped caring. Um, I didn't care. <laughs> I was like, let the evil dark forces get her. Just maybe then she'll shut up. <laughs> that's horrible, isn't it? It's absolutely horrible, but... <laughs> That, you know, I have to give credit when you can write a character that people dislike that much and they're supposed to be the one that you're rooting for. <laughs> you're either doing something right or wrong. Um, so, yeah, so I'm still reading this one. I'm enjoying it. Nancy uh, ends up trying to solve a mystery by going back to high school. And, like they talk about like she's in her 20s. She's like a year out of high school herself. So, you know, and again, I've said this before. This is one of the most iconic covers. I love this cover so much. So, so much. And then because I finished uh, Joe's Girl last night, I did start reading uh, Her Amish Protectors by Janice K. Johnson. And I am enjoying this one. I'm like two chapters in the prologue in. This book starts out like with the like on the ground running kind of an idea with a domestic violence situation. And that's all I'm going to say. Um, so our female lead, what's her name? Is it Nadia? 
Nadia. She um, was in that situation. Uh, I don't want to give too much away. And she's suffering from, of course, like flashbacks and she lives in a lot of fear. So she moves from this like big town or big city where this happened in to this small Amish community. And she's kind of restarting her life. She owns a quilt shop in the, the big, so that was in the prologue, that domestic violence situation. And then in the first chapter, she's uh, working at a like quilt auction and they're trying to raise money for these families whose homes were devastated in a recent tornado. And these Amish women are selling or have donated their quilts to sell for the money to go to these people. So a lot of money was made and a lot of people, because they know in Amish communities, like the Amish are not going to take a credit card. They pay a lot with cash. So there was a large amount of cash in this lockbox. Nadia brings the, the locks box, the lockbox home to the next day, take it to the bank. And she wakes up in the morning and was in her bedroom and it's gone missing. So she's the one kind of being looked at like, well, that, the most logical suspect is going to be her. It was in her bedroom. She claims all the doors were locked. So the premise of the book is that this Amish community is going to kind of come and rally around her. And along with that is the chief of police, um, whose name is Ben. So there's going to be a romance there. But so far, guys, I am two chapters and I'm loving this. So yay. It's, it's, a, it's a chunker of a book, but it is large print. So that's why it seems longer than it actually is. So yeah. Looking forward to that one very much. And then I will be jumping back into role-playing. Now, I did mention that I listen to Small Town Big Magic mostly on audio. So role-playing I also have on audio from um, Audible. But I'm not going... I'm not going to be driving anywhere by myself until Monday. Because I didn't go in the office today. Uh, tomorrow, Garrett and I are going out. But I'm not going to listen to an audiobook while the two of us are in the car. Same with Sunday. So Monday, I have to go down to the hospital just for an appointment. No big deal. But I will listen to an audiobook then. If I'm still reading this, I will pick it up on audio. So at the end of these videos, I last week I put up a um, these clips of like, oh, here's the book I read and this is the star rating. I've added to it and I've put at the bottom these cute little graphics. I think they're cute. Of like a set of headphones and then what looks like a, like a Kindle and then like an open book, like an actual physical book. So whatever format I read the majority of the book in is what I'm going to circle to say like for example small town big magic even though I have it physically I'd say at least 75% of that book I listen to on audio so that would be an audio read for me you know if I get through a good chunk of this over the next few days on my kindle this will be a kindle read kind of an idea but I might pick up a little bit to listen to on audio in the car so I think I talked about this in a previous video excuse me cheers it's really dry in here today you know why I'm filming this on my lunch break and I was busy on the phones quite a bit this morning. So that's probably why. So I'm glad I'm filming this now. <laughs> but anyway, then I am listening to audio on my way to and from work. But just because I had small town big magic, like on audio, I had it from scribed. I today, like when I was finishing it, I didn't finish it on audio. I finished it by reading it. So like if I'm in the car, I'm going to listen to the audio. But outside of that, generally, if I'm at home, if I'm doing whatever, I would much prefer to to read, you know, whatever edition I have. So back to role playing. I'm two chapters into this one. It's by Kathy Yardley and it is a romance featuring two older characters. So she is like in her, she's 48 and he's 50, I think. So, so far I am absolutely loving this and I will let you guys know more. Anyway, I have rambled on. My lunch break is almost over, so I've got to get back to work. So anyway, guys, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye everybody. Hi friends, happy Saturday. It is the 15th of July and I am out in a parking lot. I am actually in the town of Hamilton, which is like midway between Toronto and Niagara Falls. Um, Garrett and I just decided to come out for something different to do. So yeah, we're out here. Um, we're just stopped to stretch our legs um, and I thought I would just do a clip to end off this vlog because I have not read anything else today. I did go and get my nails done this morning and I do you like and while I was doing that um, I tend to listen to an audiobook so I had my earbud in and I was listening to role play role playing by Kathy Yardley which I'm really really enjoying the narration I can't remember the name of the female narrator but the male narrator is um, Chris Brinkley who does all the uh, Winston Brothers books so that makes me very happy but anyway guys like I said, this is just kind of a clip to end off this vlog. Thank you all so much for watching. Not a huge reading week, you guys. Only two books, and both of them are a bit of a disappointment, so that's a thing. 
but um, hopefully I will have a lot more red next week. But uh, I will talk to you guys then. Hopefully I should have some other clips after this. I'm going to see if Garrett can get some while we're driving um, for me of places. So we shall see. But anyway, talk to you guys later. Bye.